From that moment on, my brother and his wife told me that they wanted to take care of the house on their own. They said I needed to find a new place to live. My mother, agreeing with them, began treating me as if I was a burden. Did they even realize who had been paying most of the bills for the house? I couldn't believe the level of disrespect I was facing. Deep inside, I made up my mind to take action. My name is Rachel. I am a 33-year-old woman living at my parents' home. I moved back in after finishing college. At first, I tried working in the corporate world to build my career, but it was too overwhelming for me. The pressure was too much, so I decided to return home. While I was unemployed, I started looking into jobs I could do from home. Since I had a background in science, I began working as a freelance engineer. I started with small projects, and the money wasn't great in the beginning. Still, the experience of working for myself was very rewarding. Working independently felt very different from regular jobs. I realized I could earn a decent income without dealing with constant office politics or unnecessary social interactions. Over time, I got better at what I was doing, and my confidence grew. As a result, I started getting more projects and earning more money. Within a year, I was making as much as someone working a regular corporate job. The real problem, though, wasn't the work itself. It was making my parents, especially my mother, understand what I was doing. My father listened and understood when I explained how I earned money. But my mother had a harder time accepting it. She believed in traditional ways of working, like going to an office, and she didn't understand how I could make a living online. No matter how much I tried to explain, my mother would ask me things like, how long are you planning to stay here? It felt like she didn't believe my work was real. Even when I showed her proof, like emails from clients and bank statements showing my income, she still didn't trust it. She thought my job was shady or part of something suspicious, like a scam or some strange religion. It didn't matter how many times I showed her that the payments were legitimate or that my work was completely honest. She kept worrying, saying things like, What if you lose this job? What if you end up depending on unemployment benefits? Those don't last forever. Her doubts were endless, and no explanation seemed to reassure her. Despite this, I kept pushing forward, determined to prove that my work was real and that I could succeed on my own terms. It wasn't easy, but I knew I had to stay strong and keep going. I had been thinking about living on my own, but I didn't have enough savings to make it possible yet. Around that time, my father's health began to decline. His legs and back were getting worse, and he needed nursing care. He had to retire early, which meant a sudden loss of income. My father tried to reassure me by saying, my pension will be enough. But I knew my mother's spending habits, and I wasn't sure they could manage. My father looked so tired and worried about the uncertain future. My father had always supported me through college and even when I moved back home because of mental health struggles. The thought of leaving him alone while I went to live on my own felt wrong. My mother was also struggling, confused, and upset about my father's sudden health problems. As I thought about everything, I felt a strong sense of responsibility. It was time for me to step up and give back to my family. I told my father, Don't worry, I'll help support the family from now on. He looked surprised and asked, Are you sure you can handle it? Is your income enough? I confidently showed him my financial situation and explained that I was earning a steady income for my freelance work. My father, who had always been understanding of my circumstances, was surprised but proud of how stable I had become. Encouraged by his trust in me, I promised to help with household expenses, medical bills, and anything else they needed. Every month, I started transferring a fixed amount of money to my father's bank account to help cover the bills. Since my mother had been using my father's credit card, I decided to create a new card for myself and gave her a supplementary card to use. My father gently reminded her, please try to spend less and be careful with money. But my mother wasn't very happy. She questioned, shouldn't Rachel be the one to move out? 
I explained how much I was contributing financially and how difficult it would be for them without my help. Even then, she didn't fully believe me or trust my efforts. It took my father's persuasion to get her to agree to let me stay at home and continue supporting them. As I kept working and helping with the household responsibilities, I noticed my mother started taking my help for granted. Her attitude became stricter, and she often made sharp comments. She would say things like, Can't you finish your chores faster? It felt like no matter what I did, it wasn't enough for her. Still, I stayed focused on helping my family and doing my part. I knew that even if my efforts weren't always appreciated, they were necessary, and I was determined to keep going for the sake of my father and our family. I tried to explain to my mother how difficult it was to balance my work with taking care of the house, but she didn't seem to understand. She dismissed my concerns as if they weren't important. Over time, the strain between us became obvious. Our relationship seemed to be getting worse, and I wasn't sure how to fix it. My father, on the other hand, understood how hard I was working and offered his support. Even though things were difficult between me and my mother, we kept going like this for a whole year. After that year, my father's health suddenly took a turn for the worse. He needed to be hospitalized, and I began visiting him every day. I spent time with him, offering comfort and trying to reassure him. I could see how much he appreciated my efforts, and he often thanked me. I know it's not easy with your mother, but thank you for everything you're doing, he would say. His words meant a lot to me, especially since I knew the situation at home was becoming more difficult. As my father dealt with his health issues, the relationship between my mother and me continued to worsen. The pressure and stress were taking a toll on me, but I stayed committed to helping my family. I kept thinking back to all the things my mother had done for me when I was younger, especially during my time as a student. Those memories kept me determined to keep helping, even when it felt overwhelming. Then, something unexpected happened that changed everything. My brother, Scott, and his wife, Lauren, moved in with us. I didn't see it coming at all. Scott explained that they were moving in to help me and ease some of the burden. I was shocked by this news. My mother didn't say much, but she avoided making eye contact, and it felt like there was something more to the situation than they were letting on. While they claimed they were moving in to help, my mother, with a hint of sarcasm, suggested that now I could contribute even more to the household. As I thought about it, I realized there was more to the story. My brother had graduated from a prestigious college and was working for a well-known company. I wondered why he and his wife felt the need to move in with us if they were both doing well financially. It made me question their true reasons for being here. I, too, was working hard to support my family and I wondered if they could manage without me. The transition to living with my brother and his wife was much harder than I expected. Lauren would wake me up early every day, shouting, Wake up, Rachel. Make breakfast. I was already awake and busy with my work, but she didn't seem to care. She kept banging on my door, demanding that I get up and make breakfast. Come on, get on with it, she would say. I didn't want to argue, but I felt frustrated. I was trying to manage my work and support the family, yet it felt like no one was respecting my efforts. I forced myself to help out, even though mornings in our family were usually more relaxed. We weren't used to strict routines, and everyone would eat breakfast at their own pace. Especially when my mother and Lauren were around, there was no urgency. I always thought it was natural for a wife to prepare breakfast for her husband, but Lauren insisted that we all pitch in. Reluctantly, I joined them in the kitchen. I tried my best to make a nice breakfast. I carefully prepared soft scrambled eggs, a fresh lettuce salad, buttered toast, and a juicy sausage. I thought they would appreciate the effort. But when I presented it, their reaction was far from positive. Is this all you made for breakfast? This isn't enough, they complained. Frustration bubbled inside me. 
I couldn't believe they were so critical after all the effort I had put in. I finally snapped and said, You don't have to eat it. My tone caught them off guard. Lauren looked furious and snapped back, Who do you think you are? Scott joined in, laughing mockingly as he said, What kind of attitude is that? Who do you think you are, really? I tried to explain myself. I have work commitments, I said, hoping they would understand that I couldn't keep dropping everything to cater to them. But instead of understanding, Scott shot back, What kind of work? Are you serious? Are you crazy? Their lack of understanding and constant criticism pushed me over the edge. I packed in my laptop, ignored their comments, and left the house. As I walked out, I could hear Scott yelling after me, demanding to know where I was going. I didn't answer. I just needed to get away. I headed straight to my father's hospital room. When I entered, he looked up, surprised. Rachel, what's wrong? You look upset, he said. I sat down and let it all out. I just had a huge argument with Scott and the others. I admitted, feeling overwhelmed. My father's expression was one of concern. I didn't realize things had gotten this bad, he said softly. I'm sorry, Rachel. Don't let it weigh you down. You don't have to stay in a situation that makes you unhappy. You can live your life the way you want to. His words gave me a sense of relief and clarity but I still worried about my mother. What about mom? I asked. She might feel more at ease if Scott stays at home. My father shook his head. Your happiness matters too, Rachel. You don't have to stay somewhere you're not comfortable. All I want is for you to live happily, however that looks for you. Encouraged by his support, I made up my mind. That evening, when I returned home, I knew it was time to leave and create a space for myself where I could live freely and peacefully. When I walked into the house, it felt like a tense scene from a movie. My mother, brother, and sister-in-law were all sitting there with serious expressions. Before I could even ask what was going on, my brother accused me. Why weren't you at work? I had to take the day off because of you, he said angrily. In my mind, I wondered why it was so easy for him to just take time off from his job. Their voices grew louder as the argument escalated. Finally, my brother shouted, Get out of here! From now on, the three of us will live here together. If you don't want to stay, then leave. We don't need someone like you around. I was shocked. Why? What did I do? Asked, hoping for an explanation but they ignored my protests. Both my brother and his wife insisted, you're not needed here anymore. We can handle everything ourselves. Even my mother, siding with them, seemed to think I was just getting in the way. I felt anger and frustration building inside me. They completely ignored everything I had done for the family, especially my financial contributions. They were so focused on their own concerns that they didn't care about my efforts. Furious at their insensitivity, I decided to take action. I quietly transferred all the money linked to the credit card my mother used every day into another account under my control. I knew she'd be shocked when her card stopped working. Then, I moved the money from my father's account into a separate account I created specifically for his medical expenses. My mother didn't know about this change. I had effectively shifted the family's financial responsibilities onto my brother and his wife. Although I didn't know exactly how much my brother earned, I was sure this would put a lot of pressure on him. Once I finished sorting out the finances, I packed my belongings. Standing in front of them, I declared, I'm leaving. They were caught off guard by my announcement. For a moment, they seemed stunned. But as I watched them, I could tell they were secretly enjoying the situation. My brother sneered. Finally, you're leaving. We've never dealt with someone as troublesome as you. You're not coming back, are you? Of course not, I replied firmly. And don't contact me. They smirked and mocked me as I walked out the door, but I couldn't help wondering what they'd think once they realized how much they depended on me. Starting over in a peaceful new place, I felt a sense of relief. 
I finally had the freedom to live on my own terms. I poured my energy into my work and began to feel refreshed and focused. But, as I expected, my new peace didn't last long. My brother soon called me, disrupting the quiet I had worked so hard to create. I told you not to contact me. What's the problem now? I asked sharply, unable to hide the irritation in my voice. On the other end of the line, my brother sounded surprised and a little desperate. Rachel, what did you do with the family finances? He asked urgently. We can't manage anything anymore. I stayed calm and replied, I told you many times about my work and how I was managing everything. But neither you nor mom believed me. I've been supporting all of you this whole time. Well, mom said a lot of things and I guess I got confused. He admitted his voice shaky. You can't expect me to keep helping now that I'm gone. It's your responsibility to figure it out, I told him firmly. Not long after that, my brother called me again. This time, he was practically begging. Rachel, I need money. Please help, he said urgently. I was confused. Are you joking? Don't you have a good job at a big company? I asked. To my shock, he confessed. I got fired, Rachel. I made a big mistake at work. His words left me speechless. I began to realize why he had come back to our parents' house. He must have thought there was plenty of money, maybe relying on the idea of a stable pension after our father retired. The thought of him discovering the truth about who had been supporting the family amused me, but I also felt disappointed. Soon, his wife and our mother joined in, asking for money. They said they were almost out of savings. My mother even admitted, your father refuses to contribute to the household finances anymore. I had enough. I've supported all of you for long enough. It's time for you to take care of yourselves, I said firmly. I cut ties with their financial problems and told them I wasn't going to help anymore. My father, tired of the constant strain in his relationship with my mother, decided to leave quietly. He consulted a lawyer and moved to a peaceful place to live on his own. I continued visiting him daily, but I focused on building my own life. Meanwhile, I heard updates about my brother from a mutual friend. He had moved into a small apartment and was living very frugally. My mother, who had always been a homemaker, struggled with her sudden need to find a job. My brother found it hard to deal with younger colleagues and their opinions at work, and his wife eventually gave up on the situation. She left him, leaving my brother and mother to handle their challenges together. My mother still had her old habit of overspending, and I worried about the debts she was piling up. Despite all their struggles, I knew I had made the right decision to step away. It was time for them to learn how to handle life without relying on me. However, I realized I couldn't keep helping everyone. I decided to focus on my own goals and worked hard in a peaceful and comfortable space. Slowly, I saved more money and thought about exploring new opportunities. While building my future, I made sure to spend meaningful time with my father, who always stayed positive and cheerful. I appreciated every moment with him, knowing how important these memories would be.